is good everybody welcome back to another my name toys video today we are back with our wwe SummerSlam 2022 full show review now coming into the show not very hyped for it i felt like the card was very very underwhelming man lots of rematches lots of matches i did not care about but would the show be hype would it be a great show usually that's at what happens with wwe right you go in you think ah this show doesn't look too good or ah i'm not really hyped for this show and then they over deliver and with everything going on with vince mcmahon with triple h stepping in charge of head of creative and making all these big changes to wwe i'm very excited for the show just for that alone and i think that's why it was worthy to watch just to see if anything crazy took place just because triple h is is trying to come in with a bang man he's really trying to make a statement here and i hope that he does i'm very very excited to see what takes place with wwe you know i'm not believing nothing until i see it but i love triple h and his style of booking and everything he's got creatively so i'm excited to see where we go here i'm honestly very very hyped that vince mcmahon is out of out of that position i think that it is for the best and it is time for a new day yes it is anyways man let's dive into SummerSlam 2022 would it be great would it be terrible let's dive into everything i'm gonna break down every single matchup and give you all of my thoughts and concerns considering this show and we will decide if this show was great terrible or somewhere in between so SummerSlam starts off with bianca belair taking on becky lynch defending her raw women's championship in a matchup that i wasn't really hyped for just because of all the rematches but these guys have great chemistry and i knew that it would be a fun one and it was it was a fun matchup. I felt like it was kind of like low impact for a little bit there. It seemed like the chemistry is always there between these two, but I felt like some of the moves didn't quite have the impact that they should have, and it felt a bit off, a bit weak at times, but overall fun match, overall great opener to the show, and Bianca Belair does have a great spot at the end to defeat Becky Lynch and retain the championship. Big moment right there, but I think everybody's going to be talking about what happened after the fact, and Triple H just coming in with the hard hits immediately being in charge of head of creative, because after the matchup you had not one not two but three different returns to wwe the first one being bailey who we have not seen in wwe in like a year i honestly even forgot about bailey because i had fantasy booked her returning for so long that i just forgot her existence but after bailey comes out we're like oh my god bailey how epic then out comes dakota kai and we were like oh my god what the hell is this dakota kai is back and then after that io shirai comes out so we get a three for one return and not only is it eo shirai she's actually going by eo sky now and that was confirmed that's like her new gimmick slash name in wwe but all three of these ladies return completely changing the landscape of women's wrestling in the main roster which is going to be huge because you guys know how vince and everybody has treated women's wrestling and the whole deal there triple h is going to completely revitalize this and bring it back to old school nxt days man really hyped for these returns really hyped to see where these ladies go and how the women's division is booked but this was an epic day i popped hard for this to see bailey back cannot wait to see where we go from here but this was a great way to start off SummerSlam and get the excitement flowing for this new era of the main roster of wwe next up guys we had logan paul taking on the miz with maurice and champa or champa in his corner fun little matchup you know I, i'm not a big fan of celebrities in wrestling i'll say it every single time but you have to give logan paul his credit man he is a bona fide stud athlete like he's a really good athlete man you can tell by how limber he is and how well he can jump his frog splash was impeccable. The way he can leapfrog over, over the Miz as he's running through the ring. You can just tell he's very flexible, very good athlete, great athletic background, great moonsault. Technically, pretty sound in the ring. Looks a lot better than some other talent that I see. I just don't like celebrities in my wrestling, man. You have to give him credit. He does win with a skull-crashing finale, and this matchup was very fun and exciting, and it was ener energetic, and, you know, it got the crowd off its feet and everything like that. I just don't care for Logan Paul in wrestling. And sort of what I'm saying about that, my stance on celebrities in wrestling, I'll try to give you guys it and just kind of try to explain it the best that I possibly can. It's basically just celebrities coming into wrestling. I feel like it's more for a one-off or a series of matches, but the day-to-day -day grinding to the top wrestling, I'm just not a fan of that. You know what I mean? I think he's a great athlete. It was a fun match, but I just don't want to see it anymore after what we saw. And I think it's just because, you know, you don't see that in any other professional sport. You don't see somebody come in and I know wrestling's a bit different different because it's you know it's predetermined you can do all these things but it kind of makes the rest of them look like a joke and i think if the guy comes in if a celebrity comes in not even logan paul but if you come in you have respect for the sport you grind and you want to get better you put in time i'm all for it you know i'll be more on board with that but that's just how i feel about it man it wouldn't matter if you know cam newton retired right now if cam newton wanted to walk away from football forever which he probably is going to retire anyway but if he wanted to walk into wrestling tomorrow i still wouldn't be a fan of it you know what i mean i don't care who you 
are. It really does not matter who you are. If you're not a built from the ground up wrestler and you have a professional career in another field that makes you a celebrity, I really don't want to see you in a wrestling ring. Ronda Rousey was one that won me over, but that was MMA. I feel like that's a bit different too, you know? I don't know. I just don't like celebrities in wrestling. It's just how I am. I, I, I don't know. Maybe one day it'll change. Logan Paul's a great athlete. I thought it was fantastic as far as his athleticism and how he looked. His frog splash is one of the best in WWE. I mean, what Montez Ford, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens are the only ones that I can really think of that even hold a candle to his frog splash. But Logan Paul does win. I'm sure we're not done with this. Ciampa looked out of place over there in the corner. Looked like WWE Universe mode, but he got thrown out because AJ Styles came out and beat the hell out of him. Probably going to lead to a series of matches, which I'm fine with. Break off AJ and Ciampa on their own thing and leave Miz and Logan Paul to their own deal and let me get a Ciampa and AJ Styles feud. But Logan Paul wins. Fun match. Great athleticism on show. I'm sure he's not done. And I don't know. I guess I'm just going to have to build a bridge and get over it. Next up was the United States Championship match. Bobby Lashley defending against Theory. The money in the bank holder. And this matchup was over in under five minutes. Bobby Lashley locked in the hurt lock. Made Theory submit. And it had me on the fence already, bro. I was already thinking of my skull. I was like, oh my god. This guy's going to cash in later. Would that come to fruition? You'll have to wait and find out. But oh my god. It was already in my brain. I was like, this dude got destroyed. He is going to absolutely cash in. If he does, please God be a failed cash in. I do not like Theory. Not a fan of the guy, but I know what they're trying to position, or at least Vince was. I don't know how Triple H feels. I hope Triple H feels how I feel about him, but we'll have to see, and, and you know, we'll have to see how that goes, but Bobby Lashley destroys Theory, made him look very strong, and I'm all for Bob getting the win here. Very good stuff. Next up was our no DQ tag team match between the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic taking on the Judgment Day and Finn Balor, Damian Priest with Rhea Ripley at their side. This match up was okay. You know, I'm not a big Dominic Mysterio fan. I feel like Logan Paul's a better wrestler than him. You know, I've never been a Dominic Mysterio fan. If you're a fan of the channel, you know how I feel about him, but I like the Judgment Day as a group. Feel like they needed this victory, but that would not come to fruition. You want to know why, Brad? Because halfway through the match, some a staircase lights a flame, and out comes Star-Lord Cosplay Edge. Comes out there. Actually, let's get him out here in front. Let's get him right here. Let's put, yeah, perfect. Right there. Edge comes out, beats the hell out of everybody, spears for everybody, and the Mysterios end up winning the matchup. It's no DQ, right? It's no DQ, so out comes Edge. I'm guessing we're probably going to get some sort of six-man mixed tag or Edge versus Finn Balor going into the net. I don't know. I don't know where we're going from here, but yeah, that's how, that's how this one kind of unfolded, which I was okay with as far as storyline. It makes sense. You know, the Judgment Day did kick Edge out of the group. It only makes sense for him to return and get that, you know, come up. It's there, but he comes out. He kind of had like the brood look still. He had fire and flames and all kinds of look. He looked like Star-Lord, though. He had the red jacket. He had the haircut. He was looking pretty good out there, but he came out there, raised hell, and he cost Judgment Day the matchup, which, what, I, uh, I don't know. I, it just just the matches on this show are very just blah. It just doesn't feel big enough for SummerSlam, but you know, it is what it is, man. Next up, guys, we have Pat McAfee taking on Trash Corbin in a singles match. Not a match that I'm really invested in, you know. I, I understand the history, which is cool. It plays into the story and stuff. It's just, again, with the celebrities in wrestling, and I love Pat McAfee. I love his show. I think he's charismatic. I think he's great at what he does on commentary. I think he's a pretty solid wrestler and great athlete. You know, it's it's nothing against anybody that comes in from the celebrity world. It's just how I feel about the, about it. You know, I like him a lot more than Logan Paul. And at least he had that gateway into wrestling by him starting off on commentary and kind of morphing in there. But at the same time, man, I still feel the same way, you know. But Pat McAfee does pick up the win over Trash Corbin. That was kind of ugly, you know. Like, it wasn't a clean victory because he pushed Trash Corbin into the ref. Ref falls down. Kicks him in the nads, hits him with a ugly Panama Sunrise and picks up the win. Now that I think about it, it may have been a Canadian Destroyer, but it was ugly nonetheless. Eh, you know, it was what it was, man. I'm, I'm ready for this to be over now. You know, I, I don't really care about it. There's, I don't know if there was one match on this show that I was really looking forward to outside of maybe the last man standing match at the end, just for the simple fact that is like, I'm just ready to get some new fresh feuds going. You know how it said the thing about not really looking forward to any matches outside of the main event? This was another match I was looking forward to simply because both both teams are fantastic, but it was the tag team match with Jeff Jarrett as special guest referee for the Undisputed Tag Team Championships. The Usos taking on the Street Profits. Both teams look really good in their gear. They look like they're a part of one big faction here, but the Street Profits had beautiful Tennessee Titan-inspired gear. I hope we get that in figure form, in elite figure form. Downsize, downsize our Angelo Dawkins. Make him look a hell of a lot better. Give us double-jointed arms of both of these guys. Completely new formulas so that Montez Ford can have some lower leg rotation. 
Nation. I mean, the, these were, they're very toy -edic. Having the Tennessee Titans inspired gear since they were in Nashville play, you know, this event was in the Tennessee Titans Stadium. Very sick. And even the Bloodline was looking good as they always do in their black, white, and red. They were looking great. But this matchup was very entertaining as you can imagine. Great athleticism by both teams. I mean, these are two of the best tag teams in the world as far as I'm concerned. Great timing. Great back and forth between the two. Really enjoyed this one. It was probably my favorite match of the night so far. Maybe. Off the top of the dome. Bianca and Becky was pretty good as well. Logan and Miz was exciting. It just was eh, you know, just didn't really care for the celebrity thing. But this was a fun matchup. The Usos do retain though. I honestly didn't, I, I don't know how I felt about that. You know, I, I think that it's fine to keep the streak going. You know, they have like a 380 day reign going right now, which is kind of insane. You didn't, you don't really think about that. But anyways, the Usos do retain continuing on with the bloodline and I'm all for it. You know, I don't really have an issue for it at the moment. We will have to see how it changes as Triple H takes command of creative, but we will find out sooner rather than later. Next up, guys, was our SmackDown Women's Championship match. Liv Morgan defending against Ronda Rousey. Two women that I like in WWE. I think that, you know, I enjoy Liv Morgan winning the championship. I, I thought that she's been getting better and better. Cashing in and winning was great. I like Ronda Rousey as well. Not on the mic. Her character work is dog shish, but usually in the ring, she's pretty good. But this matchup was terrible. It was so underwhelming. Like, what the hell happened, man? It seemed like there was an audible or something. It was just very odd the way everything transpired here. Very quick, like, I don't even know how long this match was, but it was not very long at all. I don't know the official, I don't know the official count, but it was very short. It was very short, and it was a weird pinfall. Ronda Rousey trying to lock in the arm bar, and then Liv Morgan, like, tilted her up, so, her, like, the top of her shoulders were down, and she won the match at one, two, three. It ended abruptly. It ended out of nowhere. It was very weird, and then Ronda Rousey snapped, beat the hell out of Liv, beat the hell out of the ref. Some, uh, backstage managers and stuff like that came back, came into the ring and broke it all up, and then Ronda fled. It was just, I, I don't know what's going on here. I guess it's a heel turn for Ronda, or, uh, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know where this goes from here, but it was, uh, it was a weird one. It definitely was a weird one, but Liv Morgan is still your SmackDown Women's Champion, which I'm all for, so I guess that works out for us, but, uh, yeah, just a, just a weird one, man. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down below. And for our main event, we had the last man standing match for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, like part eight at this point. They've wrestled so many damn times. The match I was most looking forward to just because, you know, I, I like I, I say I'm sick of this matchup, but then every time they're announced, I get a little bit giddy just because I want to see how this one goes down. Even though they've proven multiple times that it could be absolutely terrible, but they've proven it could be a banger as well. And this one was an absolute banger. Holy crap. What a crazy matchup, man. Before we even get into the matchup, you have to go watch this one. You have to go watch this one because it was the most insane thing I've ever seen in a wrestling ring, probably. And I'm not overstating that, man. This was unbelievable. First of all, Brock Lesnar came to the ring in a damn tractor, which was epic in itself with his cowboy hat and his flannel. I'm so looking forward to that three-pack. I cannot wait to get our cowboy Brock with flannel and jeans and our ultimates with the ponytail heads. Like, I'm so excited to get the those figures. Jesus. However, he comes down in his tractor. It's like a custom Brock Lesnar tractor. I hope to God we get this in figure form. I gotta have a tractor for my Brock. But he comes down. He jumps off the tractor. Tackles Roman Reigns. They're like a bat out of hell. Suplexes back and forth. We get some table spots on the outside. We get them into the crowd. They're fighting on some scaffolding. Some nice back and forth again. We get some finishers. We get some hard hitting maneuvers. As we near the end of the matchup, we had some great near falls with the last man standing gimmick. Like, some brutal table spots, too. Like, their backs were cut open. But as we as we near the end of the matchup, Brock Lesnar picks up Roman in the bucket of the tractor, dumps him into the ring. Then he takes the tractor and legitimately picks the damn ring up and flips it and, like, moves it and takes it out of sorts to where it's literally, like, bent and up in the air. It looked very dangerous. It was a crazy situation in the arena. I can't imagine what it was like there live. I can't believe I had friends that were there live. I'm sure that they were losing their damn minds. Had an opportunity to sit second row at this show. Didn't do it, but... It was insane. Paul Heyman takes an F5 through the announce table. The Usos come out to help Roman. They're all battling. Austin Theory tries to cash in. So out comes Austin Theory. He comes down and busts Roman Reigns in the face with the money in the bank. You're like, oh my God, he's about to cash in. Luckily, Brock Lesnar thwarts that, beats the hell out of him. Then Roman Reigns proceeds to hit Brock Lesnar with a Superman punch, a spear. He keeps getting up, keeps getting up, hits him with a title shot to the head, gets up again, hits him with another title shot to the head, gets up again. 
again. He finally lays him out with the Money in the Bank briefcase. He gets up again, and then he hits him with another title shot and buries him underneath announce table pieces, steel steps, chairs, everything to retain the Undisputed Championship. And this matchup was just borderline incredible and insane, man. I enjoyed this matchup so very much. It was just such a thrilling ride. It was what you want out of a Roman Brock Lesnar match. You know what I mean? Just guys beating the hell out of each other, flying all over the arena, a bunch of things that you're not expecting. Just a spectacle. Just a really fun, explosive matchup that was insane. It was bat shish crazy. The man moved the ring with a tractor. It looked like my arena after I film a lot of stuff and then the arena falls over. It looked like chaos. It was insane. It looked like the purge took place. I loved it. It was awesome. But holy hell, I did not expect that. The damn ring was picked up, bro. We got to see up under the ring because it borderline flipped off into the crowd. Oh my god, what insanity. I didn't know what to expect after this, but Triple H did a fantastic job on the show. He did a fantastic job. I mean, let's, let's not get crazy, okay? The beginning of the show and the end of the show were the best parts of the show. Everything in between was kind of forgettable, to be honest with you. Nothing like immaculate insane, but some good portions to the show. I'd probably give it like a seven and a half out of ten, maybe. I don't think there was anything horrible, but that's the match, man. That's the show. It was just crazy. Roman and the Bloodline retain all their championships, which I'm fine with. I don't know where the hell we go from here. I I'm just excited to see what Triple H does, head of creative now. We got a little taste on this show. I think we're in the dawning of a new day, and I hope that we remain this way, man. Let's remain on this trajectory. It was great stuff. Let's see where we go, but I'm getting the hell out of here, man. That wraps up SummerSlam 2022. What did you guys think? I thought it was batshit and crazy. Batshit crazy. It was absolutely insane. Good lord. Anyways, man, I'm getting out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys in the next one. You cross the line, I've been